So let's create a scale which has double layers of text. We have one here that shows the date, and the other one will be the date number. So let's start to look how we can create a double X scale or labels here, where you have the numbers and the day, for example. First of all, make sure you have the border template, which you can find here on chartgs3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. And once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page here. So let's start to work. First of all, what we're going to do is we want to make sure we have the uh, adapter, the date adapter for this, because we're going to work with dates. So I'm going to select here on chartjs.org, click on ecosystem, and we're going to scroll down here and search for the adapters. Once we did that, select date FNS. You can use any other, but just follow their instructions. I use date FNS because it requires only a single JavaScript file, which is this one here, the chartjs adapter date FNS bundle minimize JavaScript file. Put it in here and make sure it is, of course, loaded after the chart.js library. Refresh. Nothing happens yet, but now we can start to convert these items here, these labels, into dates. So I'm going to say here, very simple, uh, 1 January. Then the next one will be a string value again, of course. And then this will be February. And let's do two more dates. This will be March and April. 4 and number 3. Save. Refresh. Now we have these, but this is still considered a date, or sorry, a string value, because I need to uh, add up here in the X scale that we are working now with date. So we're going to say your scale date, and then we say type will be equal to time object, comma, and then the time object, we will say the unit will be the day. If I save this, refresh, there we are, we get now something very nice. So what I want to do now is start working on Basically, I want to get here just the numbers. And then I guess right now, because there's too many of them, I want to slice this maybe in a full month, or let's say from January 1 to February 6. So what I'm going to do here, comma, say min value will be 2000, of course it's a string value, you just put in January 1. The maximum value that we want to show will be February 6. February 06. Save. So as we refresh, it starts to work nicely, but of course we have this redundancy of showing all the Januarys. That doesn't make any sense. So let's start to clear up and reduce it, make it more cleaner. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here the display, uh, display formats with an S. And in here, I'm going to indicate for the day, and then we can put in the item. And what we're going to do, if I do just the E, you can see here, we get the number one, and two, or you can see here the numbers. It is Saturday, or so which one is Saturday and Sunday? I guess this is Sunday, this should be Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Doesn't really matter, but you understand the logic here. If I do another E, it will start to show us the day uh, here, but, and then what we want to have here is, like that, as we keep on going, you can see here what we get. Uh, what I would like to have here then is the numbers. So I'm going to do here, as we keep on adding up, full day, like that. You can see here, now we get this, and we can do here six times E, and we will get here these two letter days. All right, so that is perfect. So that's what I want to have. So once I did this, I want to eventually uh, avoid the rotation here. And as you can see here, we're skipping a few days. I want to show every single day. And I guess there are two ways to do this. You can maximize the size. We'll say here 80%. Then it will work because it will have enough space. There we are. Or in case we have, that might be the case as well. We can say here, uh, auto skip set this on false. So what I'm going to do here in the ticks, uh, let's put it here down, we're going to say a ticks object, and then within the ticks object we're going to say auto skip set to false. By default it's set on true, so if I remove this, put it back to 700 pixels, we should have, I guess maybe it just doesn't fit, in that case it would, but normally the auto skip would avoid it. Anyway, 
Uh, am I correct? On the ticks, yes, auto skip. This is the correct term. Doesn't matter. What I do want to avoid is the rotation as well. So I'm going to say your max rotation. Put this on zero. So that will mean that it will not rotate anymore. Now we have all of this. What I want to do now is I want to give the su uh, Sunday and the Saturday, the weekends, a separate color. I will give this a nice background color. So what can we do for that? Well, luckily there's a, a nice option here. We're going to say comma. We're going to say a show label backdrop, which is true. Um, of course, like that. Save. So what it does is it will create now a background color for this. So if you do your comma, and I'm going to say here, backdrop color, and this will be black, for example. Now they have all these colors, but as I indicated, I don't want this, uh, all of them, only the specific weekends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an object out of it, because what we can do is basically this, and this is basically the logic that we're doing here. We're going to say here, let's say uh, hashtag, like that would be great. And then the other one would be maybe a hashtag or make this uh, blue. If we save this, you can see here we get these random colors. This logic means it, in this, it understands the array. So what I, want to, all, what I only need to know is when is Sunday or Saturday starting and then putting the colors in a specific sequence. So that's what we're going to do here. But for this, I'm going to use a callback functionality. So I'm going to say here the backdrop color index, I guess values, although we don't need any of the others. I'll be only using color. And let me just show you what I'm talking about with color. If I save that, refresh, open up the developer tab. Now it becomes all gray because it has no color. So it assumes gray is like a default color if there's nothing being specified. You can see here we get the information, we get the values here, but I want to go in the ticks. And I get the value here, which is the milliseconds. And this information of the milliseconds is very important for us. So we can grab this here, convert it into a specific date, check if it is Saturday or Sunday. And if that's the case, assign a color. Else, don't assign a color. Very straightforward if you understand what I was just showing you with the array. So that's what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do now is, well, constant. And this constant here will be the date equals new date but of course we're going to grab this item here how do we get here well if i hover over this here you see tick dot value all right so we're going from color dot tick dot value so this will give us the date then what i want to do here is i want to check here let's say day of week what day is it and then what i want to grab here is the date here and say dot get uh day which allows us to get the day, and if I do a console log, we should get a number. You can see here we get these numbers, and in this case, zero is Sunday, and number six is Saturday. So if we know all of this information, we can now start to play around with it. So all I want to do is, you can say here, for example, constant is Sunday. If this is true, uh, it will be day of the week, should be equal to zero as I indicated same with Saturday but Saturday is number six so we put number six here we say here Saturday and then all I want to know is if this is true or false let's grab this is Sunday save refresh you can see your false true false 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 and then again somewhere here true there we are so it keeps on looping in a sequence because that is correct it loops through every one of those so we have all of this. So what I want to do now is quite simple. Create a simple if statement. If is Saturday, let's grab this here. If Saturday, and then we say it equals true, or Sunday equals strict true. If that is the case, what I want to do is I want to return, basically pushing the array, the following value. Hashtag triple E. This is a light gray color. And then what we want to do is else, if that is not the case, I just don't want the color at all. And just say here, we can return triple F for white or just nothing or transparent, whatever you want to do here. 
So I'm going to just do a white matching with the background color. And as you can see here, now it starts to highlight this. So that looks quite nice. What I want to do next is, of course, get the numbers. So how do we get the numbers here? Well, I'm going to show you a nice trick. We're going to basically copy all of this and go to add up here a new scale. And this scale will be number X2. And as we do this, you will see immediately it gets some of the same format. So now all we need to do here is basically a few things, removing all these lines, I'll do that afterwards. But here, play around with this here. Uh, we had here the day, and if I'm not mistaken, triple E would give us that, no, or is it that one? Oh no, of course not, sorry, it's not the E, I guess we need to work with the day. We get the day numbers. So day numbers here, then you get like this, but if you want to make it quite similar, I would say put in two digits, so it's a double D, so you have zero, one. So whatever you prefer, one or the other, just select them. Next, what I want to do is remove these grid lines here, or these, uh, I guess grids and border. So what I'm going to do here. So let's start to look at the, I guess the grid lines and the border. So what we can say here, uh, border. Let's remove the border first. Display equals false. Put a comma here. There we are. We remove that. Let's remove the grid line as well. So I'm going to say a grid and display false. comma save there we are so now remove that one we could remove these here as well or remove everything to make it a bit more nicer what i will do is i do some tiny adjustments i'm going to copy all of this and put it on the x scale here let's put it just here so it's easy to spot and then we're going to say well let's do this first see here all right i think that's quite decent but what we could do here maybe is uh i'm not sure it's i think it's line width can make it thicker three pixels it's either width or line width in this case I'm not seeing any difference or maybe uh, line width I guess it's not maybe it's just a width border width there we are that is better and um, what we could do here is maybe make it bold if you want to that's a final one here then I would say here in the uh, uh, the upper one here let's see where are you there we are border uh, ticks that's the one so you want to pinpoint the ticks then we're going to say font and font we're going to say here uh, weight equals bold save refresh there we are looks absolutely phenomenal and that's basically how you can create a quite nice scale you can see here one january that's supposed to be sunday i'm not sure if that's the case and most likely it is but there we are. What is very important if you do this, that these min and max items here should be as aligned as possible or you remove them all so that the scale, because these are basically two independent scales, that they are all matching with each other. But you can see here the auto skip. Let's see if the auto skip is working. I'm going to grab these two and put them uh, in the X. I guess it's already in here, but for some reason it just doesn't work. All right, I'll just leave it for now. I will check that maybe in the f near future. But that is basically the way and what you need to consider. So let me just put this all back to its original state. Of course, we can do more. It would be even fun to put, for example, the month here. But that will be another video where we can continue on on this specific skill. 